Before I begin, I'd like to tell you about my friend Stacy. Stacy was an ardent reader, especially of classical literature. She had a particular fondness for the Russians. She loved to talk about history, politics and languages. In fact, she spoke a little of almost every European language. And impressively, she also spoke Chinese. She had this wicked sense of humour, and we often spent hours chuckling away to our favourite puns and um, playing Civilization together. We actually used to sing um, these really silly songs while playing Civilization, like, This little nuke of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little nuke of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, we, oh, we had heaps of them, oh, all these little songs we'd sing about. Um, what we're doing in Civ. Anyway, I had a breakdown in my early 30s and I stopped eating, I stopped socializing, I stopped thinking about anything else other than my failed relationship. I was completely fixated on it. Stacy came over and she cooked dinner, washed my clothes, made my bed, listened to my pain. Um, I'd never realized um, just how much generosity and compassion she had in her until then. I, I realized I, I realized now that hardships in her life had taught her to be extremely grateful for what little she had and, and being humble and understanding other people's hardships. For a while Stacy became the most important person in my life and I was very grateful to have her. In fact I, I even asked if you'd like she'd like to stay in my life permanently. However, she declined without wanting to discuss it further. Um, she then left for, for China um, for her career in the civil service. Anyway, we communicated intimately over the next few years, but never as often or as intimately as we had before. One day, I stopped getting replies from her at all, I, I, and I didn't think much of this at first because she'd sometimes dropped off the radar only to resurface months later. But before I knew it, a whole year had gone by since I'd last heard from her. And, and then the CCP virus situation in China started. And the last time I'd spoken to her, she had been in China. Um, so I was worried for her safety and a, a lot more this time. So I, I tried with more urgency to try and get in touch with her. <sighs> Eventually, I discovered that she had actually died a year earlier. Suddenly, uh, without warning, and I, I still don't know the details, and I may never actually know the whole details of what happened to her. And so, um, a, a deep sadness hit me very hard, and that's because Stacy was someone I, I loved very much, and and not just for her generosity to me, but because of how unique and complicated she was. There will never be another person like Stacy in the universe. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah, there won't be another Stacy ever again. But, fortunately, if I close my eyes, I can still see her face. Her, I can see her mischievous smile and I can hear a very distinctive voice and and I can even imagine what she would say about the current situation with the CCP virus. I can do this because of a fascinating feature of the human brain. See, because the world is so complicated, our brains try to help us make sense of the world by using information stored in our memory to, f to fill in the gaps. So it saves us a lot of time. So we don't have to like search our house every time. We just remember where everything is, where we placed it, and, and when we scan the room, we're not really actually seeing the room, we're kind of remembering it, and in, in a peculiar way, consciousness is kind of this blend of perception and dreaming. When reality doesn't match our memory, that's when we feel surprised and we detect the change, and, and it's like waking up from a dream, and it's all part of the magic of being a human being. What's particularly interesting about this is we don't simply do it with objects, we also do it with people. Inside my mind is a ghost of Stacy, based on my memories of her. This ghost is sometimes called an introject. The purpose of an introject is to simulate the personalities of people we frequently encounter in our lives so that we can make reliable guesses about what they like to do, 
like to listen to, and importantly, how they're most likely going to react to the, the things we say and do with them. Having introjects of the people in our lives is a huge boost. <laughs> it really enriches our relationships. It's, it's definitely one of the um, fascinating, or more extraordinary things of being a human being. But it also means that when someone dies, they're never truly completely gone. A ghost of them lives on inside us as an introject. I'm blessed by Stacy as she has left me with a warm, supportive ghost of herself that gives me encouragement and affection whenever I remember her. Also means that when someone we love dies, they're never truly completely gone. A ghost of them lives inside us as an introject. Now I am blessed by Stacy as she has left me with a warm, supportive ghost of herself that gives me encouragement and affection whenever I remember her. She was without doubt a very positive influence on my life. However, our brains don't simply remember the positive people in our lives. They also create ghosts for the people who tormented us, bullied us, and traumatized us. The introjects for those people can be extremely painful, even long after the abusive person has disappeared from our day-to-day -day lives. Some people even report being able to hear these interjects continue to abuse, yell at, and discourage them years after they cut off contact with them. Consider having a nasty teacher who used to always put you down for every spelling mistake you ever made. Maybe she called you stupid or incompetent. Then for the rest of your life, you have an interject of that teacher inside your head and she'll whisper into your ear long after you've graduated or she's gone and say, you're stupid, you're incompetent. And she'll say it every time you make a spelling mistake. Now, most people are pretty resilient to these kind of interjects, especially if they feel happy and motivated. However, if you're feeling tired or sad or doubt your self-worth, then sometimes the interjects of these nasty people in our lives start to haunt us, causing us all sorts of psychological distress. A lot of the time I spend with my clients involves helping them to recognize these interjects and learn to accept them and find healthier ways to live with them, rather than having to live through the endless ordeal of being scolded by a long departed bully. So please, the next time you're with a friend, a family member, or even employee or workmate, think about what kind of ghost you will one day leave behind to haunt their mind. Spare a thought for my poor lost friend Stacy, and, and try to leave someone you love with a warm, generous ghost to remember you by, and walk with your friends or family member for the rest of their days, as Stacy has generously done for me. That's all for this video. As always, take care. Please like, share, and subscribe if you found it useful. And until next time, Perspera ad Astra.